kidney-related disease is a serious concern for Me Watch Health. In Northeast Arnhem alone, we have 24 people here that have end-stage renal disease. Of that 24, most of those are having care in uh, Darwin at the Nightcliff Clinic at this point in time. A few of those people um, having care here in um, Norland Boy, oh, sorry, in Yakala through uh, Me Watch Health. And there are others that are at this stage that choose not to go to Darwin and uh, therefore do not take any care at all uh, because of the, the, um, the, the need to actually leave the region and their family and um, traditional obligations. Roughly about a thousand people here in Northeast Arnhem alone uh, have some uh, level of kidney disease uh, there. Okay. What's concerning for us is that the down dialysis clinics are already stretch at capacity and demand certainly outweighs the ability to provide services. This creates concerns about sustainability of end-stage renal disease care in the NT. Um, now, MIWA Health do welcome the uh, Australian Government's 15 million investment in Central Australia for renal care. However, uh, consideration for other regions must also be priorities, such as North East Arnhem Land. Uh, MIWA Health's view is that renal dialysis should be brought to the region and delivered on, uh, on country. Um, there are people who have end-stage disease, renal disease in East Arnhem Land that choose not to stay choose to stay on country and not receive dialysis at all. They do, do this because of isolation and alienation from family and their cultural obligations. So what we're advocating for, a model that where there would be uh, two renal nurses operating on each of the communities in North East Arnhem Land and um, having a fly and fly out arrangement from a hub in Nullenboy where there's obviously um, the greater opportunities for accommodating those people. And lastly, I'll just put on the record that there needs to be greater resources for primary health care um, in the region to pre for preventative, preventative programs. And at that, what I'll do, I'll leave it there for the moment and hand it over to Alan Cass, and he'll moderate the rest of the uh, panel. Thanks, Eddie. Can I start by acknowledging the traditional owners, the Gumach people, uh, and thank uh, pay my respect to elders past and present and also acknowledge the Yothi Yindi Foundation for the foresight to have this discussion. In Australia, there are more than 2,000 Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people with severe kidney disease. These people require dialysis or a transplant to stay alive. For the vast majority, that means hemodialysis, sitting in a chair connected to a dialysis machine three times a week for five hours in a hospital. In remote areas, the burden of disease is 50 times higher than the national average. And for these people, the vast majority, as Eddie has told you, are forced to relocate from Yukala to Darwin, from Kinsor to Alice Springs, uh, Rono here will talk about relocation from Wyndham to Perth. This is a story that is writ large again and again across the country. What we wanted to do today, I don't want to talk much, I'm going to ask questions of people on the panel and we have three powerful, passionate uh, Aboriginal people who can talk about caring for someone on dialysis or their own experiences and also in Eddy you know, wonderful uh, and committed CEO of an Aboriginal health service struggling with and thinking about how best to meet the needs of the patients of this region. Paul Lawton on the end is a kidney specialist who's worked with people from this part of the NT for 16 years and also has an incredible passion for working with patients and their families to give them the best care. Can I start maybe by talk, turning to Yalme? I had the privilege of meeting Yelme uh, a number of years ago in Darwin when she was caring uh, for Dr Yunapingu. Uh, and I think 
Yalme, can you talk to us about the impact on a family of caring for someone with kidney disease? And at the time, you know, the experience of having to move to Darwin uh, to, to get treatment. It was a nightmare for me. Um, I did, didn't think it was a easy job looking after a, after someone that is um, is a real fa renal failure. Um, we both tried hard looking after each other, um, but sometimes it was very hard. As I said, it was a nightmare. Um, living away in Darwin um, for five years um, uh, was very, very hard for me. We was homesick nearly every day. Uh, that's how much we were missing home. Uh, home, but also missing the family. Um, first time... Um, it was 2003, uh, 2007 when he started his dialysis, um, homo dialysis in Darwin, on the 14th of November, um, from a vivid memory. Um, we, we tried, it was in 2012 that we, um, we could talk to someone to get, get us home get us back home. It was um, Harvey Cresswell that we talked to, which he was then had a job with um, Miwatch. Um, uh, we kept on talking, talking to each other. Um, um, there was a little funding that we could um, fund him to get him a chair and um, bring him back home. <coughs> Thank you. Maybe to follow on, Gundamuk, you're having dialysis here in Yukala. Can you tell us what that experience is like and, and how it helps you and family to be able to have dialysis here? Um, I feel very, very happy, close with my family. I just finished from dialysis and I have to rush in for this thing. <laughs> yeah. I, I do my own home training. I do it by myself, putting the lines and everything, put the numbers in. So it is a great for me to do it by myself. So I want to be at home with my family. So this is what the vision is for us, that we come together, hear Kalamok and talk how we can get back home. Because home is a something that we leave behind. And we have to rush into Darwin just because of um, a chronic disease that we had, kidney especially. So I feel really happy here at home. Glad to see my family, glad to see my grandkids. So that's how I feel to have dialysis here, more closer with my family more closer that I could go out to see my other families at homeland. So that's what I'm finding out. I was here nearly for three weeks now, so I'm going back soon, back to Darwin, to give other space for the others to come, because we three people have to come in, and then other three people have to come in, another three who has been here, 
have to go back. And that's what we're doing because there's not enough machine there. So Gundamuk's talking very clearly about the pressure on, on the system, um, increasing numbers of people needing dialysis every year and great pressure both in Darwin or Alice Springs or Tennant Creek and here in the community. Well, you had to move 3,000 kilometres to start dialysis from Wyndham to Perth and take your young family with you. Um, can you tell us about that experience? Yeah, um, first of all, I just want to recognise the traditional owners as well. Um, you, you might know that I'm not from the Northern Territory, I'm actually from the Kimberleys. Um, my home is Wyndham, but my, where I am from is um, a place called Umbulgari, and I am still yet to get back to my home of Umbulgari. Um, it was really hard to, uh, because, just giving a bit of my background just quickly, this is, um, I had a transplant last year on May the 11th. It was my second transplant. My first transplant when I was actually five years old and my donor was my mother. Um, and it lasted about 23 years. It was the most hardest thing um, to live with, but I've had 23 years of practice, so it just kind of comes naturally now. Um, with moving far away, I've seen a lot of, um, a lot of my people and also non-Indigenous people who had to move out from their homes, uh, some from where I'm, I'm from as well. And they've been down there for, you know, 10 years and stuff like that. And it's really sad because um, with us as Aboriginal people, going back to land, going back to the country, we, um, we have healing uh, through our spirit and, you know, with our family. Um, when we were down in Perth, I had to move my whole family down there, put my kids through school, and I was just lucky enough to have a big family down there. We were, we were all living in one little room uh, for the last three and a half months, three four months, uh, while I done dialysis and also getting trained up to take over the PD uh, bag so I can go back up to Wyndham um, and support my family by uh, keeping up with work, keeping up with bills, and even though uh, I was sick, um, you know, I still had bills to pay, I still had kids to look after, and um, yeah, it was really, really hard. Uh, but I'm very grateful that I had a very uh, strong uh, family to, to support me, like the um, two lovely ladies over there, talking a lot about family, and that's probably the biggest thing about um, being sick is um, looking for support. Thanks, Ronald. Well, when people talk about dialysis, like you sort of think of um, huge hospitals in capital cities. How can the system work better to support people getting treatment closer to home out in the community? Dialysis and end-stage kidney disease for Indigenous people is largely preventable. Uh, I'm personally uh, having been involved with Indigenous people for 16 years, I've seen enough of the distress of Indigenous people on dialysis, particularly the dislocation story you've heard. Business as usual at the moment is more dialysis, as you've heard Eddie say in East Arnhem and also around uh, Central and Northern Australia. But it doesn't have to be that way, there can be hope because dialysis is preventable. We've seen over the last few days some great announcements from government, which is fabulous, to support more dialysis in Central Australia. And we're hopeful uh, that, that there will be more support for people who need it, and need it now, as you're hearing, uh, with the system really stretched. But the good news is through resourcing of appropriate primary health care, not in the hospitals so much, although we do need more dialysis, out here, not in the hospitals, but with resourcing of primary health care services like Watch Health, we can actually put an emergency safety fence at the top of the cliff rather than just have more ambulances picking up people at the bottom. Maybe that's a perfect lead to Eddie. 
Um, so I think Paul's saying we need to both prevent disease as well as address the critical issues of how do we treat more people closer to home. What are the main priorities for, for MeWatch in helping your people uh, get the treatment they want? Yeah. Firstly, it's most likely that if there isn't a greater investment in primary health care uh, in organisations like MeWatch Health, uh, there's more, an estimate we have that there'd be 61 more people in North East Arnhem Land would develop NSAID renal care. Um, so the stuff that um, we just heard about the, the investments in primary health care is very important to me what you felt moving forward. Um, it is about advocacy with governments to do that. Um, under the current um, economic um, regime, it's been very difficult to get any more money out of governments, either the territory or uh, the Commonwealth. Um, I suppose one of the reasons that I spoke to um, Denise and um, Sean about um, a, a, a renal uh, panel here is to highlight all the things you're hearing today from all the players here, from the people who are uh, you know, receiving the dialysis, to the people who, who are actually um, the pair partner of people who are on dialysis from time to time, and uh, people who you know, have to relocate thousands of miles away. This is the ordinary experience of most Aboriginal people that are going through this. And now, highlighting at a, a forum like this gives us opportunity for everyone to understand what lives these people are like. And what we need is resources, as you're hearing from the experts, what the problems are, and that these things, that we don't have to have them. This is a preventable disease that if we get things right in the first place, we won't have these experiences people have. Okay, so that, that's an important message. So I think um, collectively, um, with the expertise of the people and the lobbying that we can do as a sector, um, we should be able to um, you know, eliminate this disease at some stage in the future. For the time being, Me Watch Health has a very strong view that we need to work from both ends. From the end where people are requiring dialysis right now, we have to do that, otherwise those people will die. And we need to have a great emphasis on the high end of the social determinants and all the other primary health care requirements for people in between that. There's definitely, uh, you know, there's a slope that we're on and, you know, we, yeah, that's probably where many of our is going. And, and that, that's, that's the plan we have for the future. And I think today when we're discussing critically important issues about education, employment, community development, I think we want people to reflect on the fact that the people being affected by kidney disease and being removed from communities, you can see them here. These are community leaders. These are when one person moves from uh, Yukala to Darwin, often a family of five go with them. So the impact of this disease is on an individual, a family, children who have disrupted education, so impacting on a previous uh, talk, Employment, Rono talking about his critical concern about retaining employment to support his family. So there are times when things are so intertwined that we have to address health issues in order to achieve the outcomes we want in education, employment and community development. Uh, so critical to think about that. Um, we're running out of time, I think. Um, one thing I want to say is that we've been cut a bit short, but um, you should know that in the film night tonight, uh, there is a screening of Mother's Day, Rono's story, of Rono and his family, as a, a, a wonderful film which talks through all of these issues. So there might really be a great chance for people wanting to ask questions and engage and talk about some of these issues to do it again tonight. Um, so that's a, that's a plug to come along and start the discussion. Um, but maybe can we give people a final time if they want to say something? Or we're right at the end. We're right at the end. We're right at the end. So really sorry. Uh, come back tonight and keep up the discussion. Can I thank everyone on the panel for their input? We want to